God. And when you have decided to come, Lord, I pray that all of us here, with all those who love you, will be a part of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good night, everyone. Tonight, it's my privilege to welcome each and every one of you tonight on our crusade on evangelist series. What's the topic of this crusade? The final call. And that has a very big meaning. Do we have any visitor here tonight? Wonderful. See, we have a visitor here tonight. Do we have any visitor online? Any visitors online? Okay, not as yet. So tonight we will have more blessing. Have you been blessed the rest of the night so far? Good, and we have a lot more to come. Okay, let's join with our praise team as they come to sing the fellowship song. Come and go with me to my father's house. To my father's house, to my father's house, come and go with me to my father's house where there is joy, joy, joy. One minute, folks, one minute. I want everybody to stand. You're inviting someone to come with you to where? Your father's house. And where is that? Okay. And so we're going to work together now. We're inviting you all to just come and go with us to our Father's house. Come on, put some life into it. Invite somebody, encourage somebody. Let's go. Come and go with me to my Father's house. To my Father's house. To my Father's house. Come and go with me to my Father's house where there is joy, joy, joy again. Come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house, to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house where there is joy, joy, joy. Jesus is the way to my father's house, to my father's house, to my father's house. Jesus is the way to my Father's house, where there's joy, joy, joy. Amen. Okay, now it is time for our quiz. And I know person online, either online or here in the present, you have listened and tuned in to the service so far. So you will have your answers for the question. And tonight our quiz will be done by Sister Collins. Good night again, everyone. So yes, it is that time. And I wanna thank those who, who had participated last night in our quiz. Indeed, we have just two, three, four. We have five persons. I was only able to mark four, but we had five persons participating. I thank you so much. And also, from the four or five persons that are the four persons I marked, there's actually two persons who were able or was able to answer all the questions. So, congratulations to both of you. Yes, they were able to answer it, answer the questions correctly. Others um, did made um, attempts to answer. You know, most of them got like three out of the five or two out of the five. I won't call them by name, you know, but um, uh, 
I'll just say to the winners, they were Elena Benjamin and Sister Leslie Benjamin. So I guess, you know, apart from working together, you guys were listening. All righty. All right, so I'm just gonna go into tonight. Oh, I should, should give her the correct answers. All right, so the correct answers for the night, number one, which says Luke 14, 22, uh, says and the Lord said unto the servant, Go unto out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. That indeed the verse is true, but where it's taken from was incorrect. It was actually verse 23. Topic of the night was the lost and the forgotten. Can anybody tell me what the topic of that night was? It was all right, it was gone, but not forgotten. Amen. So there was one question that, um, that you got parables were stated it was about five parables I thought that I heard but when I went back to you know look from where his information was taken from it was actually four parables that he actually stated and the four parables that he stated that night was the lost coin the lost sheep the prodigal son and the parable of the great supper all righty and uh, where it's concerned with the remaining questions. The preacher says, give me a second, technology can sometimes be a bit slow. Uh, the preacher said that there is coming a famine not for food, but for the word of God. That was his exact wording. When that he said it may not be the full text that would have been said in the Bible, that was his full wording at the time when I was taking it down. So it was indeed true. Luke 14 says, but when thou makest a feast, call but the call not the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee. And it would have continued unto Luke 14, verse 13 and 14. Alrighty, so indeed it was incorrect because there was an additional word, which was the word not being added to it. And the last one, um, and that would have been the last one. Okay, so that would have been the five questions. All right, are you ready for tonight? Have my ushers come out and gave out the papers? Is there anyone online that will be doing it from the, from the online platform? We can just run in as quickly as possible. Ushers have given out the papers already. Remember tonight, once you receive your paper, there is the indication already that you're, whether you're an Adventist or a non-Adventist, you can just uh, fill in the, the, the slot. Also from the online platform, when you scroll down on the Google Doc document, you will see where you should add your name, your telephone number, and also your address. And to indicate if you're an active Seventh-day Adventist or a non-Seventh-day Adventist, let me just quickly go into the questions. No one's participating, let me know. Is there anyone participating? Okay, great. First question. Pastor quoted Luke 17, 37, which says, for where the carcasses, the vultures will gather. Just to state though, I am going to only say it once. In school where we're learning from grade six, we were told that we do not write while the teacher is talking. We listen, then we write, right? I'm gonna take your notes. <laughs> Alrighty, so I, I'm just going to repeat it once more, and that's it. Pastor quoted Luke 17, 37, which says, For where the carcass is, the vultures will gather. Question number two. According to Isaiah, God is the only fortune teller we should go to. Question number three. And remember, these are true or false. I'm sorry. Question number three, Pastor mentioned some signs that would precede the coming of Christ. Name at least two of these signs. There is a bonus point if you can name an additional sign that he never expounded on. Question number four, ready?
Matthew 24, verse 27 says, As the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. This was mentioned under what sign? It is very important for you to come the night before. Question number five. Matthew 24, verse four. Take heed that no one deceives you was mentioned under what sign? There's a true or false. Everybody's okay? All righty, so for those online, remember you just go ahead to indicate whether you're a Seventh-day Adventist or not. Your full name, your telephone number, your address, the same with here. If you get a blank leaf, you just fill out your full name, your address, your telephone number, and indicate if you're an Adventist or not. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now. All right. Okay, now it is time where we can all take part. It is now for the offering and Brother Jarrett will be doing the offering tonight. Good night again, everyone. At this time of the night, we will collect an offering. As our usher stands in place, this offering that we will be collecting will go far away in help to finish the work of the gospel in this part of the vineyard. Let us pray. <clears throat> oh, Father, and our God, we want to thank you for health, for strength. We want to thank you for jobs that you have provided for us so that we can labor and we can earn. So as we come in your courts, we can give a free, a liberal offering. As this offering that we collected, we will go a far way in order to finish the work of the gospel in all the world. Amen. As our praise team come and sing. Okay, so as, as the offering is being collected, I'm going to ask you please to put the quiz papers in the offering plate as well. We're going to be doing... The windows of heaven are opened. The windows of heaven are opened, and the blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in our heart, since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my own spotted garment, he gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on heavenly manner, that's why I'm so happy tonight. Oh, the windows of heaven are open, and the blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart, since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my own spotted garment, he gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on heavenly manner, that's why I'm so happy tonight. We all know that music plays an important part in our service, right? So tonight we will have a special song by Elder Pottinson. Good night, church. We want to say special welcome to Sister Bernard and friends, they are all from Olympic Ray. Special welcome. Nice to have you tonight. And I hope that you might come tomorrow night and next week and the other week. <laughs> it's nice to 
Nicholas, it's nice to see you and friend. Nice to have you in church tonight. Okay, if 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 there's a problem, you can just leave it. Let it stay. He can turn the tides and calm the angry sea. He alone decides who writes the symphony. He lights every star that makes the darkness bright. He keep watch all through each long and lonely night. He still finds the time to hear a child first purr. Or sinner call and always find him there. Though it makes him sad to see the way we live, he always says, I forgive. He can grant to wish and make a dream come true. He can paint the clouds and turn the gray sky blue. He alone knows where to find the rainbows and the alone can see what lies beyond the bend. He can touch a tree and turn the leaves to gold. He knows every lie that you and I have told. Though it makes him sad to see the way we live, he always says, I forgive. He always says, I Wonderful. Now it's time for a special feature from the health department. For tomorrow night, we will have prior to our hour, so you can come with your prior request and you can place it in the box. Good night, everyone. Tonight's special feature will be based on the chronic illness, hypertension. And I'm sure all of you here know someone who has hypertension or you yourself may be troubled with the illness hypertension. What is hypertension? Hypertension is a medical disorder in which the blood pressure is raised to high levels. Blood pressure of 120 over 80 is considered a normal reading for adults. A systolic pressure, my bad, my bad. Your blood pressure rises with each heartbeat and falls when your heart relaxes between beats. Your blood pressure can change from minute to minute with changes in posture, exercise, or sleeping, but it should be less than 140 over 90 
for an adult. Hypertension or high blood pressure increases your chances of heart and kidney disease as well as stroke. How you can help to prevent high blood pressure. You can help to prevent high blood pressure by maintaining a healthy weight and losing weight if you are overweight. You can be more physically active and you can start to eat healthy foods and choose foods in your diet that are lower in sodium. If you drink alcohol, which I don't think anyone here who's a Christian should be drinking alcohol. If you do, do so in moderation or stop. And if you smoke, stop completely. How is high blood pressure treated? If the pressure is consistently high, this will require a change in diet and physical activity to reduce weight. It may also require taking medication daily for the rest of your life. So if you don't want to be suffering with hypertension and having to live on medication, I'd advise that you try to prevent it. Eat healthy, exercise, regulate your diet to have a good amount of necessary foods, like nutrients. Yeah. Don't get hypertension, everyone. Okay, now it, we reach a time where we will be blessed by hearing the word. And tonight I'm honored to introduce tonight's speaker, who is a powerful man of God, a husband, a father, and a mentor to those around him. He is the zone pastor of Penwood Olympic Way and Seaview Gardens Adventist Church. God has always used him in a mighty way in which we are always blessed. The person I'm speaking of is no other than our pastor, Michael Lewis. But before he comes to bring the word, we will now hear the meditation song from the praise team. Search no more, there is an answer in this world of death and fear. Can we all stand? He has come to lift your burdens. You will find your comfort here. Come to Jesus, just as you are, broken and sad. Come to Him, love and mercy for every broken heart. He is waiting with hope and hearts. Come to Jesus as you are. For the pain that's left you broken, He will give you peace today. Every fear you'll find in sorrow, He will wipe them all away. Come to Jesus, just as you are, broken and scarred, come to Him. Love and mercy for every broken heart. He is waiting with open arms. Come to Him just as you are. Come to Jesus just 
just as you are. Broken and scarred, come to Him. Love and mercy, forever broken hearts, He is waiting with open arms. Come to Him, just as you Just as you are, come to Jesus, just as you are, broken and scarred, come to Him, love and mercy, for every broken heart, come His way. Just as you are, come to Jesus, just as you are, broken and scarred, come to Him, love and mercy, for every broken heart, He is waiting. Just as you are, come to Jesus, just as you are, broken and scarred, come to Him, love and mercy, for every broken heart, He is waiting. to him just as you are. Amen. Let's come to Jesus just as we are. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we present this community. We pray for every household Lord as I stand here I am reminded of that dreadful night when the angel of death passed through Egypt and God placed a distinction between those who belong to Christ and those who belonged to the enemy and in the camp of the Egyptians, there was weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Oh God, tonight, hold back your judgment until your people are sealed. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, praise team. Let me say a pleasant good evening to everyone. Are you happy to be here in the house of the Lord? I am delighted to be here tonight. Before I get any further in the, seat, in the meeting, just want to inform our crusade team members that we want to have a brief, quick meeting right after the service tonight. So I just ask that you remain with us. We're just going to have, for a couple of minutes, we just want to have a brief meeting. Thank you so much.
Last night we were here and we spent some time looking at a very, I'm going to ask for the ability to share screen. All right. Thank you. Last night we were here and we talked about where the carcass is where the carcass is i need to ask a question tonight was the message clear last night was it clear last night so nobody should fail the quiz i specifically told you last night that some things are coming on the quiz didn't i yes so you can't afford to fail the quiz so I thought I was a little clear last night and I'm hoping that no one here would have messed up where the quiz is concerned. So last night we talked about four signs, four types of signs that would inform us that the world is coming to an end. And Jesus did this to tell the disciples about the future, how things would end up. And I shared with you last night that Jesus, God, is the only one who can tell the future. You remember that? And I also shared with you that no one else can tell the future. I don't care how much they study the stars. They cannot tell you the future because the Bible says, there is only one who can tell the future. He knows the end from the beginning, and there is none like him. Do you remember that? From Isaiah 46, we shared that last night. And so, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that there is none like our God. Well, I don't know what's happening tonight. Looks like we're not going to be. We're having some technical challenges, and I want to apologize Am I able to share the screen now? All right, thank you. All right, great. So the folks online, the folks online may be able to see, but I'm not sure if we inside the house will be able to see. We are working on our internet. We're having some challenges with our internet, but we're, we're asking you to continue to pray that the Lord will help us to get by with that, okay? So I'm going to be sharing my screen and the folks online will be able to see, but those of you here will not be able to see, but at least you'll be able to hear what I have to share with you you just give me a couple of minutes or seconds okay every night we're going to be reciting a theme text that i was hoping we could share on the screen it comes to us from uh the theme text, let me see what's happening here. It comes to us from Romans 15 and verse 4. And the Bible says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, they were written for our learning, that we through patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The Bible wants us to understand tonight, brothers and sisters, that the scriptures were designed to provide hope for human humanity. There is nothing else on the planet that can provide us with hope. Many persons have resorted to all kinds of mechanisms to find hope. Some have tried drugs. Some have tried alcohol. Some have tried all kinds of things. Very good. Very good. We, 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 we are seeing now on the screen. Let me see if I can uh, enlarge on the screen. 
and make it much better for us. Sorry about that. Uh, so the theme text. Whatsoever things were written aforetime. Romans 15 verse 4. It's one of my favorite passages. And I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that, 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 that the scripture was designed to provide us with hope. Let me... Okay, great. I'll have to work with this. Let me just. And tonight we're going to be talking about the subject. It's almost time. What's the subject for tonight? It's almost time. And I don't know if it's coming on the quiz, but I have a strong hunch that it might be coming on the quiz. It's almost time time tonight we're going to spend some time in the book of romans romans chapter 13 and verse 11 to 14 by the way last night i made an error and i want to correct that tonight last night if my memory serves me well i believe that i shared with you that it's roman it's hebrews 13 verse 11 to 14 i quoted a passage last night the passage is actually romans 13 and i'm speaking from that passage tonight Romans 13, verse 11 to 14. And so we're going to spend some time looking at the text. It's on the screen. Hopefully we can see it. Uh, hopefully we can see the text on the screen very well. The Bible says, and that knowing the time, that now it is what? It is what? High time to awake out of sleep for now is what your salvation nearer hmm? and the word salvation means deliverance or your breakthrough it's nearer than when we believed the big question is tonight what time it is what time is it well, the Bible tells us the time. It says it is now what kind of time? But it describes it as night time. It says high time to awake out of sleep for the night is almost spent or gone. Let's look at the text again. It's high time to awake out of sleep for your, your salvation is nearer than when we believe. The Bible describes the time that we're living in as dark times or night time. Let's look at the text. If you look at what's happening around us, Jamaica is now ranked number one in the Caribbean and Latin America for violent crimes. Dark times we have come to live in. Depression is a common mental disorder everywhere. The statistics show by the World Health Organization that over 264 million people worldwide are suffering from depression. Dark times we're talking about. World hunger is on the rise globally. About 8.9% of the world's population, that's about 690 million people, Go to bed each night on an empty stomach. That's what the statistics are showing us today. Since 2014, the number of people affected by hunger has been slowly on the rise. And if it continues at this rate, it will exceed 840 million by 2030. Brothers and sisters, we are living in dark times. Here's what the text says. The night... Is what? Nearly over. Now I want you to focus on that text for a little bit. The night is nearly over. Notice the text never said that the night is over. 
Ah, that's important. And I want you to note that tonight. The text says that the night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Watch this. Paul says in the text, it's high time to awake out of sleep. Why should you wake out of sleep? For night is almost over. When do we sleep? At night. So if daytime is almost approaching, you should not be found sleeping. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? Does that make sense tonight? The text says the night is nearly over. Now in Paul's writing, Paul is equating night to describe a period in the earth's history where conditions are very dark. And he describes day to mean when things will be over. Darkness will be over. All the pain will be over. All the trials will be over. All the trouble will be over. Daytime is almost here. And the text is saying it's almost time. And since it's almost time, Paul says, let us put off the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. What time it is? A time grossly misunderstood as party time. Now, I I'm using this language because we are Jamaicans. And, you know, when I was small uh, and I was living in a particular community, anytime you see them set up the bamboo leaves and start to plait them together you people are too young you, you 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 don't know what that means brother reese i think you understand what i'm talking about when you see a, a yard they start to plait the the, the bamboo the, the coconut tree leaves sorry and start to put it by the gate and the fence you know that some session sir henry is about to start and the music when they start to play the music, these people don't know the difference between day and night. They are playing the music all night. I remember as a boy, I could not sleep. I never liked dance. Because when I want to sleep, my window is vibrating. And I'm not talking about these windows today. I'm talking about board windows. They start to quake at night. And so Jamaica is a party country. Am I speaking the truth? Jamaica is a dance hall country. How do I know that that's what Paul is talking about? Well, here's what the text says in verse 13. The text uses words like carousing and drunkenness. He says we should put off the deeds of darkness. What are these deeds? Carousing and drunkenness. Sexual promiscuity and sensuality. Strife and jealousy. These are nighttime language. Nighttime activities. People get drunk at night. Am I speaking the truth? That's how it was when I was a boy. But today people get drunk every time and any time. Am I speaking to somebody? But in the Bible, do you remember at Pentecost when the, the, the men spoke in tongues and they were, they were preaching the word and some folks says, no, 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 no. These men are drunk. They are on the wine. And Paul, Peter says, oh, no, 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 no. They are not drunk because it is not yet that time of evening. There was a specific time when persons would drink liquor in the Bible, in Bible times. But, but And that's the time that Paul was speaking about. He says we have come to a time where people are drunk. People are carousing. People are involved in sexual immorality and, and carousing. And that is what Paul describes as nighttime activity. Now, can I ask you a question? If I were to say to you that, that uh, I am going down the road to see a lady of the night. Would you want to hear me preach to you tomorrow? You see how quick you say no? Who is a lady of the night? 
what? Prostitute. The word she's a notice the notice the expression lady. Is anything wrong with lady? But when you add the night to it, it makes a difference, don't? That's right. Paul was trying to make us understand, brothers and sisters, that when you are a people of the night, you are in a questionable position. I want you to understand. He says, he says, the day is coming. Put off the nighttime activity. He says, daylight is approaching. It's time to put off the, the nighttime activity. Why? Because your salvation is what? Nearer than when you first believe the world has become one big dance hall carousing and drunkenness and party the bible says men shall be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of god lovers of themselves lovers of money i'm going to talk to you one evening about that subject the world is in the position it's in because of three types of lovers in the bible I'm going to share that with you as we go on. For men shall be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. This is Paul speaking to a young pastor, telling him that, Timothy, the time is coming when men will be lovers of themselves. In other words, they will be selfish and they will be lovers of money. They will kill you for it. Isn't that the time we've come to live in? Can you imagine that human being value not even a cell phone? Is a cell phone is even valued more than a human being? A God ring is valued more than a human life? That's the time to which we've come to live. Men shall be unloving, the Bible says. Irreconcilable. It doesn't matter how much you beg for mercy between two people who are at odds with each other. People are so hardened in their minds, they will kill to resolve conflicts. The Bible says men shall be malicious. They shall be gossiping. People will not have self-control. People will be brutal haters of good. When you, when you decide to I remember some years ago when I was managing a particular company. As I walked through the company one morning, some of the young men who were workers there, you notice what I said? Men shall be haters of good. As I walked through the plant, I could hear them say, Look, on the one burner. Look, on the one, Mr. One Burner. Yes, because they hear me speaking about faithfulness to one partner. But you see, that is not the in thing. Man must have enough in a bungle. Am I speaking to somebody today? That's the world we have come to live in. When you celebrate the things that are good, you are not recognized. In fact, let me talk to you a little bit. I was speaking to a police officer one day and he said to me, Mr. Lewis, I was planning, I, I believe in community policing, he said to me. He says, I was planning a nice program where I want to recognize young men in the community and ladies who have not gotten themselves involved in mixed up and crime and, and they have been living good. So we want to have a nice little award, community award ceremony to recognize those young people who have been doing good to the community and contributing to the community. So he told me, watch this, he told me that he went to, he has some friends in the media. Sister Rob. And so he went and called for his media friends to come and cover the event. He said to me, Pastor, they told him, I don't want shooting spree, Agopan. You're not going on a raid. There's something where you're planning that now, that's not going to sell. Call me when you go on a raid. When you go shoot two gunmen. Call me. The media is not prepared to cover something that was good. 
not prepared to celebrate something that was good. They were more anxious to celebrate something that would take lives of people because they told him that's what sells. What a time to which we... Am I speaking the truth, brothers and sisters? I know what I'm talking about. When there are two people fighting, whether it's in the school or in the community, before somebody goes and settles it, they take out the cell phone. Am I speaking to somebody today? We have come to a very serious time that Paul describes as night. It's dark times. Now, if you don't know the Bible very well, let me help you to understand something because the Bible is speaking to the community of Seaview tonight. In the Bible, night is always used to describe when conditions on the earth are going to get very serious. So the Bible says that there were 10 virgins in Matthew 25, 10 virgins. And the 10 virgins, five were wise, five were foolish, and, and they all fell asleep. And notice they, they had lamps that they should be using to be shining light in the night. And the virgins represent the church. Watch this carefully. And the text says that at midnight, at what time? Midnight, they heard a cry made. Let me just share with you quickly that in the Bible, midnight suggests the darkest part of the night. It, it, that, that, that's it. Midnight is the darkest part of the night, much like midday is the brightest part of the day. Did you know that? Now watch this. Midnight in the Bible represents a time when God will not allow the world to get any worse. Listen to me carefully. That's the darkest conditions can get. That's the worst conditions can get. Scripture describes that time as midnight. So in the Bible, the Bible says when midnight came, they heard a voice. The bridegroom is coming. Go we out to meet him. It was at midnight that the bridegroom came. Let me share another experience with you about night in the Bible. In Egypt on that dreadful night, the Bible says God spoke to Moses. He said, Moses, I want you to tell the people to get, make sure that they have a lamb in the house that is slaughtered and blood daubed over the doorpost. Because you see, when the blood is on the doorpost, it signifies that you have a lamb on the inside, which simply means that when the mark is on the outside, it means that you have Christ on the inside. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? And so the Bible says, God said to Moses, tell the people to make sure that they follow my instructions. Watch this. And then God said to Moses, at midnight, I am going to pass through. And at midnight, I am going to set a distinction between those who are my people and those who are not my people. In other words, brothers and sisters, there's a time of separation that is coming. There's a time when the world will not get past midnight because midnight signifies the darkest condition the world will ever find itself in. And when the clock strikes midnight, war be unto the man who is on the wrong side. Mm, you can have a dance now. You can have all the party you want to have now. But watch this. Be careful who you're dancing with. Make sure you're not dancing with the devil. Make sure that you have God in your life. Follow me closely. Follow me closely. The Bible says they will be treacherous. They will be reckless. They will be conceited. Men will be lovers of pleasure rather than what? Let me tell you something. What you're seeing tonight in this building is an example of what lovers of pleasure than lovers of God is. Let me talk to you about lovers of pleasure. The word pleasure does not simply mean party alone. It's, it means loving what pleases you. It doesn't matter what it is. As long as you put your interest before God, that's pleasure. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? As long as you put your interests before God, that's pleasure. That's what pleases you. And brothers and sisters, my Bible tells me that we must hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him. Follow me closely, brothers and sisters and friends of mine online. God must be first last 
and best in your life. Men will only love what pleases them. Men will only support that which aligns with their own preference. Men will only do things that satisfy their lusts. But a time is coming. And when midnight strikes, make sure you're not on the wrong side. All this Paul on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit described as night time. Or darkness. But the party. Oh yes. There are many who are having, having fun right now. But the party is almost over. Can I tell you what, what usually happens? And those of you who, who, who know about those early days when dance used to be strong. I remember when, when, when the dance is going on. And sometimes it is so unbearable. All of a sudden you hear the siren. Unknown to everybody. And when the siren pops up in the morning, you will hear, Why on the Babylon, them come and lock off the dance. Am I speaking to somebody? Watch this, friends of mine. When the police showed up, nobody knew they were coming. And similarly, one day, this dance all called Earth, Jesus is going to touch down and lock off the dance. I'm speaking to somebody tonight. Be careful who you're dancing with. Because it's almost time. Here's what Paul says in verse 12. The night is almost gone. But I want you to note that I mark the text. I mark the words almost gone. Mm, that's very important tonight. And the day is at hand. What day? We're going to talk about that. Let us therefore lay aside the deeds of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. The period called night by Paul is almost over and we need to do something about our present situation. Paul says the night, the night with its sexuality, the night with its carousing, the night with its violence, the night with its, with its jealousy, the night with its anger, the night with all the nighttime activity, it's coming to an end very soon. Oh, you might be having fun right now. But it's coming to an end very soon. First Thessalonians 5 verse 3 says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Let's see, let's see what Paul was trying to tell us. Paul wants the world to know, brothers and sisters, that the reason why you are in the party, that the devil stage, is because the world is in a state of unconsciousness. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. I, 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 I want you to understand tonight that when you come here in the night, you're going to be learning some things you never hear anywhere else. Listen to me, friends of mine. Look what the text says. And that knowing the time, that now it is what? High time to what? Awake. You need to understand the time. You need to look at the times. I told you that last night. You can't just be living your life aimlessly and recklessly. You need to observe the times and know that it is time to awake out of sleep. Now, 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 let me help you understand something here, brothers and sisters. Let me see if that's on my next slide. There's a word in the Bible. There are three words for sleep. How many words? That is coming on the quiz. I'm not asking you. You see, every time I come over here, I feel the vibration. You know, when you phone alarm, I feel it. Listen to me. There are three words in the Bible for sleep. The one used to describe the ten virgins is not the one Paul used in this text. Watch me carefully. That's why I want to talk to you. I want you to listen to me tonight, brothers and sisters. The word here used for sleep is called hypnos. H-Y-P-N-O-S. The word used for the ten virgins is called kathudo. 
different kind of sleep. Watch what Paul says. You need to know the times. Because it, now it is not the time to be sleeping. Paul says, now it is time to get up out of your sleep. That means Paul was in vision somehow and he was looking down the corridors of time and he saw Sea View Gardens close to the time Jesus is coming back. And what Paul saw was a very dismal and deadly situation. Paul saw the entire Sea View Gardens falling asleep. Sea View Gardens not gone to bed. That's not the sleep. It's a different kind of sleep it's a kind of sleep which means it's from the word hypnos from which you get hypnotized that's what paul used he says it's time to wake up or to snap out of your trance ah can i ask you a question when persons are hypnotized are they the ones who decide to go and drink something and become hypnotized? No. No. Hypnosis is something somebody else performs on you. Did you know that? So they, they influence your mind and take you away from where you are. Let me give you an example. And, and maybe this example... Uh, persons who read the Bible a lot will understand what I'm saying. Listen to this. Anybody ever heard the story about Paul preaching? And he was preaching so long until a young man who was sitting on a window fell from the window and died. Anybody read, read, read that? Eutychus. Well, Eutychus was hypnotized. The words that Paul was speaking got him hypnotized and he fell off the window hypnosis is something somebody perform on you and after a while you are not conscious in other words brothers and sisters sea view gardens is overrun by unconscious people walking up and down. That's the Bible. That's not me. This is not Pastor Louis speaking. That's the word of God. The text says, no, not tomorrow, not next week, not the day after, but no, it is high time you know what we mean by high time? Right now is full time. No more time. Right now is just the time. Not postponing it. Right now it is the time. To awake. To get snap out. Oh, on Sunday night, uh, Evangelist Parker spoke about a young man who left his father's house. You remember that story? And the Bible says that when he left his father's house... He got all the money from his father and he thought all was nice and he go party with it. And when he parted with the money, after a while, he got broke. There was a famine and guess what happened? He found himself unconscious because he was in a pig pen lusting after the pig's food. Nobody in their right mind go and sit with pigs in mud. Am I speaking to somebody? Let me tell you something. For a man to take a piece of a blade or a sharp instrument and push it through another human being, he is hypnotized. He is not conscious. You see, the way God designed us, we don't have that kind of heart. We have to give license or way or room to something else and someone else in order to become that person. Don't you realize what's happening? If you listen to radio recently, you'll realize that there's a court case being tried with a gang. Anybody remember that? Now, I'm not going to be speaking about that too much, but I'm just telling you that one of the recordings that was played in the courts mentioned that 
the men in question, they practiced sorcery. They do all kinds of, of obia and tactics in order to go out on their mission. So that when people are crying for mercy, they don't know what that is. Unconsciousness. That's what Satan has Seaview Gardens under. A trance. And let me tell you something. You see, when somebody is drunk, they are not the ones controlling their actions. It's the rum that is controlling them. The rum in the blood that is controlling them. The devil wants to get everybody to a point where they don't know themselves. Then he can now control you and take you where he wants you to go. And that only happens when you decide to shut out God and let in the enemy. Listen to me carefully. You cannot exist without an influence. Listen to me carefully. It's either you allow God in or the devil in. You can't exist with no one in. The text says it's time to snap out of that trance. The devil has seed you God. And that's why God gave us this series of meetings to make you understand that how you're living is not how God wants you to live. He wants you to wake up because daylight is coming. And when the day comes, if you are still found asleep, you're on the wrong side of the fence. I'm talking to you tonight. Trance. The world is in trouble. The world is in a lot of trouble. But there are so many people, unconscious people, walking around on their way to their destruction. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing that when you talk to people, they will tell you, Oh, Pastor, no, sir. Don't mention devil right there. So devil can't control me. You're mad. Devil can't control me. But God is not controlling them either. Then it's who? doesn't make any sense there is no there's no neutral ground there's no middle ground it's a god says it's either you will love one or hate the other but no man can serve two masters you can't have one foot in the world and one foot in the church it's either god be god or the devil be god but tonight you have to make up your minds tonight you have to make up your minds the text says it is now time my time is running it is now time to wake up out of sleep. So let's look at the three steps that Paul says we can snap out of the sleep. Do you want to hear that before you go? Three steps so you can you can just out of that trance and the devil will not have control over you anymore. Number one, you need to wake up. That's the first step. You need to do what? The Bible says of the prodigal son when he was when he was hypnotized, when he was confused, when he was unconscious and he was in the pig pen. The Bible says, but when he came to himself. Mm, that expression means when he returned to consciousness. Guess what happens when he returned to consciousness? Luke 15 says that the young man asked the right question. He says, I don't understand what's going on. In my father's house. In my father's house. The servant I live better than me. In fact, the servant in my father's house is eating better than me. And I am right here so trying to hustle pig food. In other words, watch this. This young man recognized that the meals that are cooked at home tastes better than the meals outside am i speaking to somebody and you need to understand what kind of taste you have mm. what kind of taste do you have it is your taste that lead you uh, i remember some years ago a friend of mine you know I, I went overseas and i did bible work and i was working with souls and every lunchtime first lunchtime came i said you know what? I don't feel like eating nothing heavy. I said to her, I feel like I'd like some, something just to spice up my mouth, something nice. She said to me, Pastor, you love ice cream. 
Oh, such. No, no, hold on, Pastor. Pastor, hold on. No, quickly say no. If I make you taste while ice cream, Pastor, all when I'm in a debout, you're going to go privately go buy it. I said to her, uh, try it up. Brethren, me she am for telling. Me she am for telling. And I learned a lesson from that. You are driven by your taste. Everything you do is according to what you crave for. If you love church, you will crave for church. If you love God, you will pursue God. But if you love yourself more than God, is yourself going to be first? Let me tell you what happened. She took me to a place called Baskin Robin. And they have, nobody go up there and try it, you know, please, me begging you. And I went there and she introduced me to pis, no, pistachio. No, me not talking where the fake thing, the fake thing that only used to do. Me not talking the fake thing that only used to down here. Me talking about real pistachio when you when you when you make the first lick you're tasting the pistachio the nut is dotting all over the ice cream you can't miss it with every bite and 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 when she made me taste as a matter of fact you can always ask for a little sample from baskin and they just take a little cup and, and and give it to you in it and and i said well let me try that no? one try like Maxfield Easterbourne. One little taste and lead to, to one little next taste and the next day until it's done. And brothers and sisters, after every year when I find myself going there, even before I reach home up there, I have to stop with the luggage then. The luggage. I, I can't stop. I can't pass. Baskin Robin. Everywhere you see a Dunkin' Donut, the Baskin Robin is right next to it. And I can't pass it. Your taste. Burger King says taste rules. And by the way, that's biblical. Let me take you down. The first step is to wake up. Let's look at it. Time to wake up since the world is in unconsciousness it's time to wake up here's what the bible says and knowing the time it's high time to awake get up out of your sleep watch this how do you wake up from your sleep you see when god's words enter your mind when you hear the truth coming to you you have a choice to either remain asleep or to wake up the Bible says the entrance of thy word give it light. It give it understanding to the simple. How do I, how do I wake up? Psalm 119 verse 130. Here it is. The entrance of thy word give it light. It give it understanding. You see, when people are unconscious, they don't understand what they're doing. Am I speaking to somebody? They don't understand what they're doing. But when God's words enter your mind, you now realize that, hey, things not right. Huh? There are many people think that they are all right. But the word of God says that we are under a stupor. If you're not walking according to the word of God, you're in a trance tonight. Trust me on that. Number two, I'm running through that. Not only should you wake up, but you must do what? You can't go to God, sir. When you wake up, it's time to clean up. The Bible says, knowing that it's almost time, let us therefore what? Lay aside. Paul was using clothing language. Take it off. Go get clean up. Get rid of things are in your life that's holding back your progress. Listen to me, friends of mine. With God in your life, success is guaranteed. Can I tell you that? That's what the Bible says. Psalm 1 says, the very first psalm 
of the Bible, of the man who is the blessed man, who, who, who walks not according to the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the ways of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. The Bible says, is the light, is in the what? The law of the Lord, which we, the word of God. And in God's word, does he what? Meditate day and night. What does the text say? When he does that, he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall what? When you spend time with God in his word, the text says, whatsoever you do shall prosper. But the ungodly, the ungodly are not so. And let me tell you what's happening. Even people in church miss the mark. They're looking at the ungodly out there and they say, no, sir, the ungodly are driving escalade and in nano degree. The ungodly are build big house. And, and they think that that's what success is. When you look up the word, blessed is the man. Blessed does not mean that you have abundance of material things because friends of mine, one day you're going to leave that. That's not what it means to be blessed. It means to be favored by God. Listen to me carefully. People are, the world makes human beings measure success by the amount of things you have. That's not success. Here's what the text says. Matthew chapter 6. Don't worry about what you shall eat. What you shall drink. What you shall put on. The Bible says, if you seek me first. All these things, I will what? Add them. Pop, pop. On top of one another. Top of, God will add them. I am where I am today because of the blessing. It's not money. Look here, friends of mine. I can testify. I was in a job. I was a plant manager earning far more than what I'm earning today. It's not money. Went to university, studied chemistry and biochemistry. Came out and worked as a chemist in the lab. I was not where I am. If it was money, I would not be here. But let me tell you something. When I talk about favor, when I'm talking about God resting his hand upon your life, the songwriter says happiness is to know the Savior, living a life within his favor, having a change, in my behavior, happiness is the Lord. There are many people with money, but they are stiff, stone, dead. Money is in the bank, but they are in the tombs. Am I speaking to somebody? There are many people with money walking around, and their faces are like a rock. Unhappy. Because money can't buy happiness. It doesn't matter what you think. It can't. The text says, put off. Put off the deeds of darkness. Huh? Take them off. How can a young man cleanse his way? The Bible asks. How do we clean up? By taking heed according to what? The word of God. Taking heed. That's how you will be cleaned up. Let's look at another text. First John 1 verse 9 says, If we what? Confess our sins. He is faithful and just to do what? But God made sure to tell you that not only will he forgive you, but he will what? Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Because watch this, friends of mine. If you are filled with unrighteousness, you will have to give an account in the judgment for that. And when he cleanses you, the record is clean. Hmm? Record is clean. I remember, I remember when I, I was telling the teachers here, Yesterday, when I was managing a company, when I went to the company, I sat in the interview. Boy, I'm telling you, brethren, <laughs> you need to go with God wherever you go. The boss, them lie. Them lie. I sat in the interview, and when it was time for me to ask questions, I said, what kind of staff do you have? Oh, Mr. Lewis, let me tell you something, man. Have some good people you have a work with. Let, let me tell you. Some good. When she was finished describing them, Evan was short of about 30 angels. Because his staff complement was 30. 
So I, I, I went to work. I felt good. Take on this new job. When I went, I, I decided that I'm going to take about two weeks and observe. My first week was to go through the files. The man who, when you go through the main door, the man whom you meet who works around the front desk, who takes the phone call. When I took out his file, I saw that he boxed down the supervisor. I said, good God, what's going on here? The man that you come through the door and meet him for the first good morning, the first is the one who takes the phone calls. He on his file boxed down the previous supervisor. Since, it's since I have work in it. And, and when I don't read through the file, I'm nervous. I can't even tell you what else I read. Nervous. I said, Lord, I want me coming to you. This worse than the lion's den. And so I got a brilliant idea from my God. I went out there. I took the company policy manual that details all the company policy. And I called my first staff meeting. And I said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to reason together. I said, who is Sheila? Nobody wants to answer. Sheila no exist. So I said, okay, if Sheila is not here, we're going to make sure that she doesn't get any more pay. Sheila, Sheila, Sheila is here, Sheila. You don't want to see Sheila's. I want to see who Sheila is because what I read on her file, I supposed to walk 10 miles from Sheila. And brothers and sisters, I went through and I called a couple names. And then I said, well, ladies and gentlemen, as of today, all your files. I said, I've gone through your files. Every one of you, I've gone through your files. But starting today, your files are clean. I am turning over a new leaf and I am working according to the manual. And if a man violates this, that's when your record starts. When you confess your sins, he wipes your record clean. If that was not the case, I would have no moral right standing before you tonight. Thank God for his grace. One songwriter says, grace that is greater than all our sins. Praise God for his grace. The Bible tells us in Paul's message, we need to wake up. Secondly, we need to clean up. Because after you wake, you're not going to be in it. Huh? You need to clean up. And then lastly, it's, you need to what? Dress up. Dress up. By the way, it come in on the quiz. Dress up. The text says, but put ye on. After you have laid aside, verse 14 says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no longer you should make accommodation for the desires of the flesh. Hmm? By the way, these are three steps to prevent yourselves from being caught in a trance when Jesus comes. Are you listening to me? These are three steps that will help you to be ready for when Jesus comes. The Bible says the night is almost gone. Can I tell you something? In other words, the night, the, 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 that hour hand is, is or, or the minute hand, yes? No, the hour hand. Is it the hour hand? Bam, bam, bam. Minute hand is almost striking midnight. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? It's almost touching midnight. And when it strikes midnight, that's it. But, 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 but the text says it's almost, which means it's not there yet. And that few minutes before midnight is your opportunity to get it right. 
I'm speaking to someone. Paul is saying, brothers and sisters, friends online, you have not yet surrendered your heart to Jesus. But God has permitted the minute hand to just, to just, to just freeze. To just freeze. Just to give you a chance to make it right. Almost gone. But it's not gone yet. Almost gone. I like that word. Almost gone. But it's not gone yet. God has held back that hand just to give you another opportunity to make it right. You need to be dressed for the daytime is coming. There's a message that I'll share with you called dressed for the occasion. You can't afford to miss that night when I'm sharing it. I intentionally not telling you the messages before. I wanted to come every night so you can hear the topics that I'll be talking about. It means to have the character of Christ in your life always and be in readiness for his soon return concerning the times quickly here's what the bible says concerning the times and the seasons brothers first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1 listen to what the text says you need no one you need you have no need for anything to be written to you here's what the text says for you yourselves know very well that the what the day of the lord will come like a what like a thief at night when people are saying peace and security or peace and safety, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you brothers, Paul was speaking to the church. He says, you brothers, you are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of what? Children of light and children of the day. So right now, you must become a child of the day. Not a child of the night. Remember, talk about the lady of the night. They didn't like it. You must not be a child of the night, but you must be a child of the day. We are not of the night, Paul says, or of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do. Ah, it's important. Friends of mine, watch this. Don't look at the rest. Don't look at the others. The message is for you. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? Ah, stop watching others. The message is for you. Paul says, let us not sleep. Ask the rest who hears what some people are saying. Well, God loves people too much. He wouldn't destroy so much people. Well, the majority are always wrong. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. The last book of the Bible tells us that those who will be lost, they are like the sand of the sea. When you take up a scoop of sand with your hand, you can't count that. Picture, the Bible says, those who will be lost are like the sand of the sea. But those who will be saved, the Bible describes them as a great multitude. Listen to me carefully. The text says, don't sleep like the rest do, but let us stay alert and be what? Sober. Those who sleep, go to sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. Am I speaking the truth? That's what the Bible says. But since we are of the day... Let us be sober, putting on. You must be dressed. You must be dressed up. Putting on the breastplate of faith and the love and the helmet. That is the hope of our salvation. Salvation or deliverance is only connected with the day. But God's wrath is connected with the night. For God did not destine us for wrath, the Bible says. But to gain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, God did not bring us here to destroy us. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Destruction is a choice. If we find ourselves destroyed, it's because we choose that. The Bible says God did not destine us for wrath, but to gain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that you understand the time in which you live, what is your decision today? Hmm? What's your decision today? The Savior is waiting to enter your heart tonight. He's asking you to let him in. Whether you are a Christian or you're not, one more time, God wants you to let him in. He has allowed just a little time left. It's called almost gone almost gone 
He has allowed that time for us to make it right. I'd like to ask a question tonight. You're seated before me. You're watching online. Do you want to be right with God? If that is you, and if your answer is yes, stand with me. Let us pray about it. If you want to be right with God, stand with me. And let us talk to God about it. Friends of mine, there's something I learned in life. I always observed that when I was in school, high school, you see the guys who were popular? I went to an all boys school. You see the guys who were popular in school? Or the guys who always want to do things so their friend can see? Dion. Yeah, man, they, they don't make decisions on their own. Then brethren must, brethren must see. Say, oh, me I eat. You get what I'm saying? And I remember, oh, all my eight years at high school, up to sixth form, I was mocked. I was laughed at. I was jeered. I remember one time I was going home and a couple of guys were passing me. I said, boy, Louis, I'm going to hear you talk about your woman. <laughs> and they laugh with the scorn. And sometimes while I'm driving, I would see one or two of them, Sister B, and I would say to my wife, you see that brother there? Eh? You know, say me and him were in class together. She can't believe. He looked like my father. He looked like him could have been my father. Can't believe we were in class together. And you know what makes it worse? I am older than him. The Bible says in Psalm 1, when you serve God, when you read God's word, when you feed on God's word, your leaves also shall not wither. You go and look fresh every time them see you. You leave them green and stand up and look fresh. You look like joy is radiating over you. But the ungodly are not so. Praise God for grace tonight. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. Focus on the Lord for yourself. Don't be like the rest. Sleep not like the rest. Don't stay unconscious like the rest. It might be popular, but it's not the best thing. Stick to the side of God. Wake up, clean up, and dress up in the Lord's name. Father in heaven, tonight, present your word to your people. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit who helped to bring the words across with clarity. Lord, I pray that these words will find lodgment in somebody's heart, both online and right here in the sanctuary. We pray, dear God, that the more and more individuals, having learned that and tasted and seen that you are good, will make a decision to walk with you. Father, tonight we have a decision to make, and that is if we want to remain asleep or we want to be children of the day. It is my prayer tonight that nobody standing here while I'm praying will leave here deciding that they will remain unconscious. I pray, dear God, that they will make a decision, unpopular though it might be among their friends, though they might be ridiculed and laughed at, but I'm praying that somebody will make a decision to be a child of the day. Make today the beginning of that turning point. In Jesus' name, let the people of God say, Amen and Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. You may be seated. Our praise team will take us out tonight. Thank you for being here tonight. We are asking that you uh, tell your friend about the program. Invite your friend to be here.
I'm asking you, please, we need to see this place filled to the capacity because, brethren, we are declaring the straight, unadulterated word of God with clarity. We want the world to know that Jesus wants them to hear the final call. God bless you. Uh, I, our team members who are here, please remember I need to meet with you just for a few minutes uh, right after we are through singing. There's a call come ringing o'er the restless waves. Send the light, oh send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, oh send the light. Send the light. Let the blessed gospel, I let it shine. From shore to shore, send the light and let the red and be like the world forevermore. We have heard the message on a call today. Send the light, oh, send the light. And the golden offering that the cross will is send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel, and let it shine from shore to shore, send the light, and let the red and beam send the light. Forevermore, send the light, the blessed gospel, and let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel, and let it shine forevermore.